What's up, everybody? This is Jason, uh, Zombie Collector, and I got my very first crate. It's the All Elite Crate, AEW, All Elite Wrestling. <clears throat> they started promoting this back, I think, in July or August. And I assumed, because I was so excited I wasn't fully listening, that this was going to be like a monthly or bi-monthly thing, but it ended up being a quarterly thing. So I ordered it when I first heard about it. They released it on uh, Dynamite on one of the programs and said, you know, you can go ahead and get this for $40 every quarter or something like that. Honestly, I just was like, hey, for 40 bucks, you you're supposed to get a couple t-shirts. I think you get maybe... Some, you know, toys, action figures. You might get some D DVDs or Blu-rays. I think maybe some autographs. You know, whatever. You all know how crates work. This is the first time I ever did a subscription crate or a subscription of any kind. So I was super pumped. As you all know, I'm pretty much just focused now mostly on wrestling, AEW. Uh, in particular, that's really the only one I watch. And it was really exciting for me to see that they had this because it's not super crazy expensive. and You're going to get a variety of things. And for me as a collector, it kind of hits all the spots, you know, autographs, uh, physical media, shirts, and then whatever else we throw in there. And it doesn't necessarily mean that's always going to be the same stuff, but unless it really just sucks, which I don't know, as the, I'm the very first person to receive this, and I'm aware of it, I'm, I'm going to open up this immediately. I'm sure a lot of people else received it as well, but I haven't seen anything about it yet. So I got an email yesterday saying it should arrive in the next two to 10 business days, and it came today, so that's pretty good. So anyways, I want to get into this, but I just want to let you all know, if you're an AEW fan, uh, the crates are out there. I believe, obviously, you missed the October one, but I believe they have one coming out now for January, if I'm not mistaken. I think it's quarterly, like I said. And I think there's a couple of different price points depending on uh, what kind of service you want or what size shirts you want. I think, of course, if you get like the big boy sizes like me, it might be a few bucks more. Uh, but you know, anyways, it's very reasonable. I think, uh, well, I guess I'm where you find out, uh, but it's again, random. So I'm talking a lot cause I'm excited and I'm, I don't, I don't, I'm not nervous, but I'm just excited to see what I get. So with that being said, let's, all I did was crack open the tape so I can get into this. All right. So I'm going to try to sit this up here without knocking stuff over so far. So good. So here we go. We have uh, the other side of this car contains spoilers for this crate. Okay, so I don't want to see that. So I got a Dark Order patch for the Dark Order, as you are uh, made to do if you're a fan of the Dark Order. Talking about a group that started out kind of on a bumpy ride, the Dark Order, uh, AEW. They weren't really getting any kind of you know momentum. Uh, Brody Lee joined as the exalted one that started getting them uh some uh, momentum going and then he actually passed away i think last december or october or something i don't know he he passed away towards the end of the year i guess it was around october because he just did a, a a one year anniversary so he died about a year ago uh this month and that turned them from bad guys heels you know the villains to like baby faces immediately because Brody Lee was very much loved. He went by Luke Harper um, in a WWE. So anyways, so that's the patch there. So that's very cool. Super excited about that. Then there's that card here for November, full gear. It's, it's uh, gearing up to be a pretty amazing uh, pay-per-view. If you watch the last pay-per-view, I mean, they brought everybody. Everybody's there now. You got CM Punk, you got Ruby Soho, used to be Ruby Rye. You have Brian Danielson, used to be Daniel Bryan. You have Adam Cole there. You know, they're just like, you know, and then they have all their you know, homegrown talent there, like Ricky Starks and MJF. And I'm um, trying to think of who some other, you know, uh, Hobbs, you know, Will Hobbs, Powerhouse Hobbs. You know, there's a, these are just guys, uh, Dante Martin. So many great guys that are going through the ranks. Like Butcher the Blade, I love. They're a good tag team. Uh, the Lucha Brothers. There's just so many great wrestlers over at AEW right now. I mean, it's literally, if you have not watched AEW or you're only catching it from time to time, you are doing yourself a disservice as a fan of wrestling. It makes you in love wrestling. And it brought me back into wrestling. I stopped watching wrestling for 20 years, basically. Like, after the whole... 
quasi attitude era, even though I wasn't really into that. I was more into the WCW stuff during that time. But, um, but like I said, it's now, it makes me feel nostalgia because they got Sting and they have Jericho, they have Big Show, they have Mark Henry. You know, these are all guys that I grew up watching quite a bit. Um, you know, Tully Blanchard, Jason Snake Roberts, Arn Anderson, you know, there's just so many guys that are, you know, popping in and out. Uh, not to, like I said, not including the, the up and coming stars, like I said, Britt Baker, Thunder Rosa. So there's so many people that are just in there. So anyways, here, I would definitely recommend picking up the full gear. I always watch all the pay-per-views. So let's see here. Then there's a sticker here, All Elite Crate sticker. So there you go. So the first shirt, ooh, it's a Japanese. Nice. So, oh, this is a Kenny Omega shirt. Nice. Right there, Kenny Omega. And it's a Japanese there at the bottom. Let's see if I... Kenny Omega, yeah, Kenny Omega. That's that's what it says in Japanese. If you can see it, so there you go. That is awesome. You know, I've held off on my anything AEW related because I wanted to wait for these this crate because I didn't. You know, a lot of times they get a lot of stuff from you know, uh, uh, wrestling. I think what pro wrestling tees and things like that. They have like a joint co-op they do with them, and so I didn't want to buy a bunch of stuff like memorabilia or like. This, you know, knickknacks and shirts, and then they end up sticking that stuff in the box. So I kind of wanted to wait and see what I was going to get. So that is awesome. Okay, first one up. Very happy. All right, next up. Oh, we got a, oh, nice. A bottle opener for Hangman Adam Page. Nice. I need this for my brewskis. I actually always try to look for a, a, a bottle opener, and I have one that's like one of those like Swiss Army kind of deals. So now I have this. So if you know, he is a he is a millennial cowboy. He's uh, that's kind of like his shtick. He's from Virginia. Says hold my beer, Hangman Adam Page. He had been off since about late summer, and he just came back and won the uh, uh, six man ladder uh, battle royale. I don't know, battle royale, but six man ladder match against all pretty much all the heavy hitters in AEW to take on his former tag team uh, championship partner and Kenny Omega. So this will be a good, uh, a good, uh, um, you know, add to my collection. I'm starting to grow and also watching that uh, wrestling uh, championship match in the coming future. Uh, I do like Hangman Adam Page. Uh, he, he, this goes back to talk about AEW will do a storyline for a year. Sometimes two years. They've only been in business for two years, basically. And they are so committed to telling stories and not just throwing crap at the wall and see what sticks that the story of Hangman Page and his, like, ups and downs about just being a part of the elite um, and being a part of Kenny Omega and tag team partners, champions, the fallout, the, you know, having his drinking problems and all that. I mean, just everything they do in there, it's just it's amazing. It is literally great storytelling. It's a man soap opera, which I like to say. Oh, nice. Here's some cool pins of um, Hardcore Legend here. Here we got Hardcore Legend. That's Britt Baker. They had a Lights Out match between her and Thunder Rosa, which was amazing. Actually, this might have been with Sheeta. I can't remember. I think her and Sheeta... This is the match she got busted open. It was she. I can't remember. No, I think it was a hard, hardcore match with her and um, Thunder Rosa. So here is, I guess it's so heavy, it has to have two pins. But this is pretty awesome right here. So again, this is something I'll put on a bag or something. Like one with my, my computer bag for work or whatever. But here you go. Hardcore legend. And she kind of referenced herself as a hardcore legend versus uh, Mick Foley, Mankind, Cactus Jack, whatever as a hardcore legend and he actually ate it up and loved it. So that's pretty cool. But Britt Baker, I have to be, I have to admit when I first saw Britt Baker back a year and a half ago, when I first really started watching like religiously, I was not impressed. I didn't think she did. She was not great of a wrestler in the ring. <clears throat> I thought her mic skills were actually okay. But man, once that was, she was playing baby face at that time. And man, once she went heel, she's been fired ever since. I mean, literally she says stuff that you're kind of like, in 2021, can you get away with some of the stuff that she says? It's kind of like MJF. Uh, but yeah, uh, here you go. It's a pin. So, so far, so good. 
All right, next up, let's see here. All right, inner, it was like an inner circle shirt. All right, great. Here we go. Here's the inner circle shirt. Or as Dan Lambert says, the inner circle shirts. So you have Chris Jericho, you have um, Jake Hager, you have Ortiz and Santana, and then you have also Sammy Guevara, proud, pride and powerful. But anyway, so there you go. There's the inner circle. I have a feeling. Whoops. Whoopsie. I have a feeling that they're going to be breaking up soon. Kind of like all their momentum that they had going for them is kind of dissipated now, it feels like. With the Pinnacle, which is MJ, MJF's group, with Sean Spears, Wardlow, and FTR, <clears throat> who's managed by Tully Blanchard. I feel like there's, um, like, they've had a couple, like, they, they had two or three matches, all of the groups together. They've had kind of one off matches, and then, you know, Jericho and MJF had their own matches. I kind of feel like it's ran its course. I, I feel like, you know, uh, FTR, um, and FTR and, uh, Pride, Pride and Powerful, um, uh, have kind of went all their separate ways, which I think they should have. Sammy Guevara just became a TNT champion. So I feel like there's a part now they're kind of moving away from each other. But who knows? I'm okay with that, quite frankly. But we'll see. Nice. I will not be opening this up at all. Uh, Darby Allen. I forgot about Darby Allen. Probably one of the biggest stars from the AEW. Like, I don't care who you are. Most people had no idea who Darby Allen was before AEW. And now he's one of the biggest stars in wrestling. I didn't know much about him, but again, that's because I wasn't watching wrestling all that much. Uh, but man, when I first saw him, he just had this like this look. I mean, that's, that's the look right there. You see, it's you know he paints half of his face there. I like that they have this blood at the bottom. If you can see it there, that's so cool. But this is super cool. I didn't obviously. I'm not. I'm not even gonna punch the punch the uh, card here. It's gonna stay punched or stay uh, fully uh, together. I will not uh, pop that out because I'm gonna just leave it as is. But Darby Allen, man, he's a he. He does not care about himself. He does not care about um, you know. He just throws himself like reckless abandonment. He just lunges. I mean, you know, he's not a big guy, but that's. I think that's a part of his. For me, at least, a part of the interest for him. Because he doesn't, I mean, you know, you're somebody like a Big Show or somebody like, um, I don't know, I'm thinking like a, like a Jake Hager or like a Wardlow. They're huge guys. And, you know, seeing them, you know, do uh, the stuff they do is not kind of surprising because they're so big. But this guy here, he's probably like 5'9", five, 5'10", five, maybe, maybe. I mean, he might be smaller than that. 170 pounds, I believe, is what he gets uh, listed as. He's not a big guy at all in wrestling standards, but he just throws himself all around the ring. He's the only person who literally well, I've seen so far on a regular basis who will go to the top of the turnbuckle and just literally just launch himself into the opponent and just like he has a thing called a coffin drop where he throws himself backwards with his arms crossed and just falls backwards and like completely just trusts that the other wrestler is going to catch him or let him hit him or whatever. He will jump out of the ring like through the ropes and just like a missile and just reckless abandonment. It's like full speed ahead, go like running. There's been one time that he's thrown himself so far out of the ring, he went into the first row of uh, fans I've seen. That he's let himself get thrown by like Ethan Page out of the ring and into the fans, like lift off, like he picked him up like a crucifix or whatever it's called, backwards and just throws him that way. I mean, he is not scared to just put himself on the line like that. So super pumped about this. Did not have it. All right, next up. All right, cool. Micro Brawler. That's the one to have right there. Sting, the icon right there. I love it. 6'2", 250 from Venice Beach, California. He debuted on November 1st, 1985. So I don't know if I want to open this up or not. I kind of want to open it up because I'm such a huge Sting mark. I've loved Sting since I was a little kid. I mean, Sting, again, you know, WCW is when I first recognized who he was. I know he was with... He popped up in NWA or somewhere first, uh, maybe, or uh, I don't know. I can't remember where he began, but WCW is where he like got his, you know, where he be, made his mark. But man, oh my gosh, so, so excited about this. So again, love it. I mean, I paid 40 bucks for this box, I think, and that's including shipping. So you can't go wrong with that. And then let's see what else we have here. Okay, and then 
All right, let's take a look here. Oh, it's a poster. Nice. Open the poster up. So you have Kenny Omega versus John Moxley. Again, Moxley went by the name Dean Ambrose with WWE. So that's super exciting. Now, the, the thing, the cool thing about this, this is from, I don't know if they reproduced this for two, for the box, or this is actually from 2019, and they're a big match together, or guess each other. It would be cool if this actually was from 2019, and they're just, like I said, just sticking stuff in boxes just to kind of fill the box up, and this wasn't remade for the box. I'd have to, I'm going to have to try to figure that out. If anybody else knows about it, if anybody watches this and knows, are these the original from 2019 Full Gear, a promotional poster, or is this just, you know, remade for it, and that's fine. So... There you go, John Moxley, Kenny Omega. Again, Kenny Omega, I'd never heard of him before AEW. And, dude, I, lo I love him. I know he gets a lot of people, I kind of give him a lot of uh, hate for whatever reason. But I just, I love his wrestling style. I just, I like it. He plays, like, the buffoon heel so well. He's, a, I think he's a great wrestler. So, I don't know. People, like, kind of crap on him. All right, here we go. All Elite Crate. The final two things are in here. Official All Elite Wrestling autograph. Oh, it's only one? thought it was two. Oh, my gosh. Are you serious? Yes. If I was going to pick one to get that is so, I mean, I, you know, it's so expensive online, I, I can't get it, is Hikaru Shida. Shida. That is awesome. Oh, man. Gambate Kudasai, 50 wins. You got to get those 50 wins. Serena D beat her. Uh, and then busted her, her, her 50 uh, win award over her head over uh, this past week uh, at Dynamite. But holy Sheeta, this is awesome. Man, I am pumped about this. That is awesome. That to me, this online right now, guys, like these aut autographs of uh, Hikaru Sheeta. Is minimum forty bucks uh, almost anywhere? Oh my gosh, that is so great! That is great, man. This box is this box by far completely exceeded my expectations. I had no idea what to expect, and I honestly, there's a part of me who goes, you know, man, if I paid forty dollars, I think it was like forty dollars and like some change or whatever, and I get a couple like just goofy T-shirts or like. Just you know, buttons and pins, and that's all I got. You know, and just like a and a, like an autograph of you know some you know jobber that they have. I've been like obviously very upset, but man, they hit it out of the park. Cool poster that I can hang up at the house. An actual functional uh, bottle opener, which I will definitely be using. It's something I will use. Poster of Moxley and Omega. A cool pin of Britt Baker after her match with, I think, Thunder Rosa, if I'm not mistaken. The lights out, uh, you know, the lights out match they did. Uh, not, I think it's non-sanctioned or unsanctioned lights out match. Or match. The autograph of Hikaru Shida, which is absolutely probably one of she's my, I was so disappointed. And I know it's all fake, guys. Okay, first of all, I mean... I know it's predetermined. Let's say that it's not fake. They're doing; they're really wrestling. They're putting themselves on the line. I know it's predetermined outcomes, which is what I'm getting ready to say about Hikaru Shida. But when she dropped the Brit, the belt of Britt Baker, it was like a, a bittersweet. I think Britt Baker definitely deserved to have her reign as a women's champion. But Hikaru Shida had such a great run, and she seemed like she was. Uh, fighting for that belt and then putting that belt on the line like every time you saw her on TV, she had a, a title match. Uh, and she did it during the pandemic, which was tough because she was performing all these matches with nobody to watch her. And to see her finally kind of get some of her recognition, a, a, a few pops from the crowd towards the beginning of getting out of the whole COVID stuff, was finally seeing her get some recognition was awesome. She well deserved it. But, uh, you know, uh, hopefully she's going to work herself back up to the, the top again and have another couple of quality matches. She had a, a barn burner with Serena Deeb this past week. It was fantastic. I'm glad to see Deeb. She turned heel, like officially turned heel. She was doing lots of sprinkling of heel stuff over her last few matches and she got injured. And then she came back. Her first match back was with uh, Sheeta. And then she and her went like toe to toe for, I don't know, it felt like a 15 minute match, maybe longer, maybe 18 minute match. 
and uh, and then like, she did some heel stuff to win, and then she busts, like I said, her, they had a pre-made, which it was great, it was great, I don't know if the word booking is the right word, but great, like, uh, visuals, or a great kind of, like, swerve, or whatever you want to call it, because they actually already pre-made Sheeta's award for first, uh, I don't know if it was first, first wrestler, or first women's wrestler to hit 50 wins, I think it was first women's wrestler to hit 50 wins, it had, like, this nice crystal, whatever, award, it had, you know, Hikaru Shida, 50 wins, da 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 made a big thing, and they had that already had the award made, and had it at the, at, at the uh, ringside, and then she lost, and not only did she lose, Dee grabbed it and hit her in the face with it and knocked her out. And I'm like, okay, all right. So we got something going on there. So all right, guys. Hope you all enjoyed it. I know I'm just kind of rambling on, but I'm super pumped and excited. I haven't been this excited for much when it comes to sports or sports entertainment in a long time. But hope you all enjoyed the video. I don't know what other, I don't know if everybody got the same thing. So I'm definitely going to be interested in seeing what other people get. I hope it's a variety of things. So we all can kind of like enjoy each other's, you know, uh, successes in their boxes. And I hope everybody had a great box like I did. It was a, or a crate. It was uh, absolutely fun. I loved every minute of it. And I look forward to the following one. Next one. Guys, if you've not seen AEW, check AEW out on TNT Wednesday nights and Friday nights. Check it out. You will not be disappointed. If you're a wrestling fan, even an occasional one or an old school one from back in the day like myself, or you're just looking for something to like just you know, just check your brain out the door and just be entertained for a couple hours with no silliness that the WWE's been giving people for the last two decades. Definitely check it out. I think you'll enjoy it. So until next time, guys, peace.